Catherine turns to a remarkable resource, Samuel Paris's personal record book. It details his sermons and charts his quest to make all churchgoers full members. New analysis of this book provides a revealing insight into Paris's mission. From 1689 to 1690, his membership was able to double, but in 1691, it pretty much ground to a screeching halt. All this good work that he'd been putting into building his community had suddenly stopped, and we don't know why. In his first months, Paris manages to attract 54 fully-fledged members, but there are still over 400 villagers who steadfastly refuse to join. The minister's record book contains another clue. The sermons written by Paris during his tenure have survived in his own handwriting. They provide a potential window on his state of mind. They're the closest that we can get to an insight into the world of Paris and his family. Over the years, Catherine spots a change in tone. Paris seems troubled. As we approach the time of a girl's afflictions, a new theme appears for the first time in Paris's sermons. He's making a sinister warning that Salem is under attack. You dwell, and one of us is the devil. In the few months leading up to the outbreak of the Salem Panic, his sermons start talking about the devil a lot and in a really explicit way. Look at this one from January of 1692. Christ having begun a new work, which a lot of historians interpret to mean the new church he's been working to establish. It is the main drift of the devil to pull it all down. Paris's sermons now warn that the church is under attack. Unless you turn to Almighty God. Now the key phrase here is the assistance of Satan. That's a really harsh, damning phrase that is strongly associated with witchcraft. This new analysis offers an entirely new perspective on the events leading up to the witch hunt. Even before the girls become possessed, Paris is warning of witches at work in Salem Village. Who here has not seen? Paving the way for the chaos to come. 